everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Judy and you're watching Winning So and So. I want to do my thank yous first. I want to say thank you to every single one of you who has watched, liked and commented on one of my vlogs and especially the one I put up last week. It means so much to me, thank you so much. And also, I want to say a huge welcome to everybody who's clicked the subscribe button. When I, just before I started recording this vlog, I'm now 200 off getting 3,000 subscribers and I really do want to get 3,000 subscribers. It's sort of a, a bit of a mission I've set to myself. So what have I been doing this week? Well, I finally started to do some sewing. The cold has still sort of kept me more sort of under control. Um, I'm definitely a heck of a lot better. I feel quite bubbly and back to my normal bouncy self. And you can see on my sewing machine just here, this is my project. It's my next blog project for Jenny Stitches. I want to start by talking about this week's Friday Sews prompt. Now, if you excuse me getting my telephone out, the lovely Jenny from Today in Jen's Sewing Room set up the hashtag Friday Sews nearly two years ago now, and she put some prompts out for us, and it starts a discussion point. And today's discussion point is... Da -da, da -da. It's gone off again. Notches. Do you cut round your notches? Do you cut down your notches? Do you just cut across your notches? Or do you just snip into your notches now? I, obviously, as you all know, have been saying for quite some considerable time. And it is essential that if that marker is there, you need to include some kind of mark. Now, when I did City and Guilds, we didn't cut notches, we did chalk lines, so we did a chalk line along the seam allowance, and then we did a chalk line down, so we had them sort of perpendicular to each other, so like a pair of axes. Um, when I first started to sew, we did cut them out like so. Now, my friend Lynn, who I talk about now, her mum, Pat, sadly is no longer with us, Pat did teach me an awful lot about sewing, because my mum could teach me so much and then she relied on her friends to sort of push me because school wasn't giving me what I needed and it was a while. We're talking about when I'm sort of like 17, 18, 19, 20, that sort of period. And Pat said that she cut her notches in. Now, we didn't argue with Pat because Pat was a tailoress and, and oh my gosh, was she just the most amazing dressmaker. And, and Taylor, she was just incredible. So if Pat cut the notches in, she cut them in, but she understood why I cut them out. Now, we're talking about the days when we used to do our main neatening for seams was a zigzag. So if you did that, you got to the notch, you had to cut the notch off, because if you zigzagged over it, it looked odd. But there again, when you're doing your sleeves, you need those notches, especially for, for matching your sleeves. Sometimes now, if I'm feeling particularly lazy, I will give the seam allowance a tiny little snip. So I get the tiniest little snip that will come apart like that. I use notches when I'm matching key parts of making the garment. Collars, sleeves, facings, and top to bottom. I never put the, the um, pocket marks on. I very rarely put in the seam pockets in. I don't like them. They can pull a garment out of shape. And if, so if you don't get your pocket seams, for your inseam pockets, completely flat, you can add bulk to that seam and it can affect the lie of the garment, so then it will affect the silhouette of the garment. Also, I, I tend to be one of these people that can put their hands in their pockets. So to stop me doing that, mum used to sew pockets up. So when I started sewing, she said, don't put the pockets in because you just put your hands in them. So I don't do it. I have a gilet and I'm insistent on putting my hands in my gilet pocket and my coat pocket. So, you know, even after all these years, I'm still doing it. So, notches, yes, I use them. How I represent them on the garment depends on my mood. But something that Jen does not mention in this particular prompt for a conversation are tailor's tags. The little dot marks that you get for the apex, the top of your dart, and you'll get them at various points. If you're doing a centre dart down the centre where your dart looks like this, to give you a fitted bodice, or to or just to give you an ordinary dart shape um, like this. 
that top of the dart should actually have a tailor's tack. Now sometimes the tailor's tacks marks around your collar, they can be done as, done as a thread tack. And to do my tailor's tacks, I have a double thread on my needle and I literally go in and I do a big loop stitch like that over on itself and pull it out. And then I will just slightly tear the pattern paper. If it's a tissue, it just pulls through. If it is a more substantial paper, it will require a little tiny cut in it. Now, tailor's tacks can be used for matching on the shoulders, especially if you're doing gathering marks. They can be used um, to mark your buttonholes, your darts, your collar positions, points for turn. And tailor's tacks are, in my opinion, essential. Now, I do know that there are different ways of doing tailor's tacks. Am I a pen or a pin? No, I'm a thread. Now I did, when I made the Zenith dress, oh, hold on a minute, I'm going to get that pattern down right. for you. The Zenith dress is by Maison Fauve, and some of you may remember it's the dress that I made for my daughter's actual wedding back in October 2022, and I will put the vlog link in my description box, and I was just thinking about that, because I was thinking of, slower so when I said that, because I was thinking about something else. When I did this, I followed the instructions to mark the dart features to the letter in the Maison Fauve pattern because the dart feature is like so. Now, Emily, who is Maison Fauve, does actually do a brilliant tutorial online and these she actually suggests that you mark with a friction pen. And I did actually do that. And I did that because they are really, really fine. And she shows you how to mark them up and down with a pin. Now, yes, for something as accurate as that, something that is uber accurate for my daughter's wedding, I followed it to the letter. Would I do it again? Probably. But a lot of dresses aren't like that. You have got simple matching marks. Taylor's tag done with a piece of thread is a much more reliable marker. And if you use thread the same colour as your garment, then if it doesn't come out, you're fine. But I do use a lot of tailor's tags and I use them, as I've said before, predominantly on darts and zip marking as well. Um, the bottom of a zip, I will use those for there. I, you've got to remember that in all of these sewing ideas and ways and means, you have to do the one that suits you. I was actually, uh, uh, Rachel popped around on Friday, we hadn't seen each other for a natter, and this subject did come up when we were out walking, and we decided that there is no right and wrong way of doing these things. You have to do them to suit you. And if you're happy with what you do, that's what matters. It's not what the rest of us say. I mean, I don't want to stand here and go, right, I don't agree with how such and such puts a zip in, and that person over there needs to do this, that and the other, and they didn't listen to me. It's not like that. You get your ideas in from various people and then you decide which of the ideas that you've seen works best for you. You may look at one and think, oh my gosh, that's so easy. Why didn't I do that before? Why was I doing it this way? That's brilliant. But these are just ideas. It's what I do. And if, any, if I do anything or suggest anything and you think, what are you talking about, Judy? In my description box, there is an in email address. Just email me and I will email you back. And I'm more than happy to give anybody any help, any time. So what else have I been doing this week? Well, seriously, I've been finishing my blogger project dress for Jenny Stitches. And I did use tailor's tacks in it. And I did cut the notches on it. And I cut them out <laughs> on this particular dress. Sometimes I feel it really important that you have a project that you can slowly work away at. And I have done this with this particular dress. And because I've had this cold and then before that the infection, I've really been able to do that. And I had a wonderful time on uh, Sunday, yesterday, sewing along with the sew tuners at home, um, pretending I was at sew tune. And it was wonderful. I sewed, I sat down and sewed from 10 till 4, just as if I was at sew tune. And I, obviously I wasn't, I was just here. Then I took the dogs for a lovely long walk. But I said to you last week that I wanted to share something with you 
that I am going to bring straight to the top of my sewing plans which will affect whether I can actually complete a Sew Yellow for Endo and a Sew for Rubel challenge. But we have an event this year in this country and I really want to do something to mark that. And that is the coronation. So I want to make a quilt for the coronation. I want to make something that will help me remember the events of the past 12 months within our constitutional monarchy. And I found this online and it's called Coronation. It's from Blocker Day 2023 by Carol Thielen. And I found it on YouTube and she has a link in her description box to download this. So I'm going to link her YouTube video for this particular block in my description box. It's free. So that is what I'm going to go on to doing. Now I do have some of them very beautiful coronation fabrics here from the Lewis and Irene collection. So this is the tea party one. She has, I have just crowns in purple. But I also had, as you know, the Jubilee fabrics. They haven't re-released the cream. And I'm desperately trying to work out if there's a different crown. And there isn't a different crown between the two. So we will be able to include that in this particular quilt. Um, I found this one. and I cannot remember where I got this from. I I think it was Etsy, so I'm really sorry I can't add this one in, but I did like it. And it is cream, so it will fit in with the creams I've got here. That was a little interruption. My brother rang. He's very good at ringing when I'm doing these. So I'm not quite certain where I was. So I think I showed you this one, which is the tea parties. And then I have the crowns. Oh, this is the one I was at. But it's really nice. It's got lots of the crowns and carriages and things on. And if I go back to my basket, and back to using my lovely baskets, um, I bought this one. This is a Lewis and Irene. Isn't it lovely? Now, and then for backgrounds and blenders, I have my favourite bumbleberries. And I know I've primarily got golds and creams. I also picked up some grey. And I might just throw the grey in as a little um, extra. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is, and whilst I was off talking to my brother, I then had a Zoom call with a lovely guy called Carr, who runs a company in Toronto called Pre-Quilt App. Now, it's a computer-based app, so you need to have um, a laptop or a desktop computer. And it's to help quilt design. I was having a few little hiccups getting it working and he's just spent 40 minutes talking me through it and basically giving me a lesson. I have not paid very much for this. I've paid $50 for the year. It worked out about £45. I do like my quilting and I do like to play around with it. I'm not going to talk to you much more about it now. I'm going to put the link in the description box but if you do like the idea of quilting can use it. But one of the biggest things I liked about it was, apart from being able to change the block around so I can put my block, I can put my block onto pre-quilt, but I can take pictures of my fabric and upload those to pre-quilt. I can upload them using pre-quilt on my phone browser and at the same time they will suddenly pop up on my pre-quilt screen and I can drop all the different colours around. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, I will show you it in greater detail but for now I wanted to keep this video quite short. The other thing I'm wanting to just to briefly mention is that I just love sewing and there are I'm limited to the number of outfits and things I can actually accommodate in my wardrobe upstairs. I have enough clothes, probably that I don't need any more, but I want to sew. I want to use my sewing machine. I want to get the most out of it. And hence the reason I thought, I was gonna have a break from dressmaking and I'm gonna do some quilting. I do have some garments cut out in my project wallets. So if I want to have a break from quilting, I can get out the overlocker and I can have a jolly 
good. So, and make some garments on that. So, oh, I haven't told you what I'm wearing. I'm actually wearing a Charlie sweater in a lovely fabric I got from Beyond the Pink Door. And the Charlie sweater is a pattern by Atelier Jupe. And it is a lovely, easy to wear um, jumper. And it has a very um, simple balloon sleeve. And it also has a really nice large arm side. So there's plenty of movement in it. So I absolutely love wearing it. So for now, thank you so much for watching. Do join me again. Hopefully I will be doing Friday shows on Friday. So for now, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching, taking your time to join me on this journey. I hope you have a lovely week. I'll see you all again very soon. Enjoy your sewing, enjoy your leisure time, no matter what you're doing, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.